Like I said, I took a pay cut on this fight because I was supposed to fight on a, on a March, on a, uh, on a, on a February 27th card and come back and fight on a Pacquiao card. Disrupt everything. Call Bob said, right, we got to make it happen in Philadelphia. I, I did an interview with, uh, George, the mouthpiece, and I told him I was gonna fight here in March on the interview, and I didn't want nobody to say I'm a liar, and I didn't want nobody to call me out on that, so I, we made it happen. And like I said, Russell Coates was a tremendous part of it. He made it happen. I mean, teamwork together. Like I said, the Al Heymans and the, this one don't want to work with each other, and that one don't want to work with each other. It's about working with each other and putting the best fights together for the people. Russell Cox and Bob Arum has done that. I mean, I mean, we work together and we get tr tremendous shows like this already sold out. Week early, week early sold out. Because you two weeks early we sold out. Thank you, Russell. Has we ever get no no? Have we ever got a response like this, Russell? Brittany Rodgers. Never. Never had a response like this in the history of Philadelphia showing. In this era, I can say, two weeks early we sold out. Because of your eagerness to fight in Philadelphia, Philadelphia fight in Philadelphia, you know, Hopkins has been like the main banner carrier for, for Philadelphia boxing for a long Legendary. time. Legendary. Yeah, do you, do you see yourself as, a, as not the prime candidate to slip into that role and be the face of Philadelphia boxing? I don't want to do it like him. I'm not going to necessarily say I want to be Bernard Hopkins. I want to be the first Jesse Hart. I want to be the face of boxing, period. I don't want nobody to discredit me or talk down on me. And I, like I said, I'm doing things my way. And I mean, uh, a famous quote by Muhammad Ali, I ain't going to be the champ the way you want me to be the champ. I'm going to be the champ the way I want to be. And the same thing how I want to think. You know what I mean? Call shots like this before you nail. I fought here, I came here, and I fought. People can say that's not big, but and then if you if then if you look at it and pull it up, then you say, well, you know, um, why why can't uh, 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 Danny Garcia or somebody do it like this? Got everybody saying a guy named I don't have a name, but nobody's utilizing what he, what they can. So is you really talking to him? Was you going through another guy, or you going through another guy, and they call the shots, and then you got, I call Bob up, we call Russell up, and we, make, we, we all come together, and we make a show like this happen. A tremendous show. Speaking of Bob, there's a lot of talk behind the scenes in boxing, and I've heard a lot of uh, rumors that um, maybe Bob's not in the business of making African-American boxing stars. And, and Floyd, you know, he always talks about how he left Bob and bought his freedom from Bob and, and became a star after that. What is your point of view on, on, on working with Bob as a promoter? I think that's a, um, I think that's a false, my experience, my own experience. Certain people have, he said certain people were born to be boxing stars and certain people were born to be superstars. Mayweather approach. He, Bob told me this personally in his office. Mayweather's approach was not what he was looking for at that time. He was looking to sell Oscar, the Golden Boy, Smile, Gold, first Mexican on the BD box was Oscar De La Hoya. First Mexican on the Weedy box was Oscar De La Hoya. Bob told me, put that together. You know, his approach, Mayweather wanted, he wanted that, the fame of everything that Oscar, and his approach was just, wasn't what it was looking for. He wanted to brash, be a brash fighter, be a flamboyant fighter, and, and that approach wasn't, it just wasn't ready for that time. Right. And then he broke out from Bob, and, he, and, he, and, it, and it worked for him. But who did it work against him? Who did it work for him against Floyd? We, ne we didn't know nothing about Floyd Mayweather until he really fought Oscar De La Hoya. And we really wanted, and, and those are both fighters that Bob built from the ground up. The list goes on. Ray Leonard. Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford is African American as well. But such with that kid, that kid is boxing stars and they're superstars. You know what I mean? You got to know how to talk when you get in front of that camera. You got to have a great smile. It's, it's different characteristics. And Bob said, I got them all. And he's going to utilize them. Every last one of them I got. He said, you're not a boxer. He said, you, we can do many things with you. You're not a boxing star. Get that out your mind. Just winning the title. I tell, I tell certain fighters that, and then I tell certain fighters they got the total package, the it factor, the superstar, the, 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 the be able to dance with the stars after this career is over. How important is it you know, to be a Philadelphia fighter who wants to fight in Philadelphia at the time when the Philly stink, you know, the, uh, the Sixers stink, you know, the, the Eagles are in transition, Flyers may make the playoff. You know, that boxing, hey, look, you know, uh, let's take a look at a sport that helped make the city to begin with. That's why that's why we came up with the heart of the city. Tell them. That's why we came up with the heart of the city. Everybody stink, everybody's doing something, nobody's doing nothing. You got Jesse Hart here, 
the heart of the city. That's how we did it. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm the one to stand for my city. I'm not, I, I'm not looking at the Eagles. We're not looking at the Sixers. We're not looking at the Flyers. It all up to me. You know what I mean? And I bring it back to my city. So we got to, we got to acknowledge that, man. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm here to make a Philly stand. This is not just, like I said, this is not just for, for money. This is not just for. This is, this is to make a Philly stand, man. You know what I mean? Tell everybody that 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 Philadelphia has the best athletes as so far as boxing in the world. Why is that? Why does What does Philly do different in the amateurs and coming up in Philly that makes the best boxers that other cities don't do? Prefer, preferably ghettos. Toughness, the, the, the toughness of every area. In North, well, in my, I can't, I'm from North Philly, I'm from 28th and Burks. Let's make, no, let's make that clear now. That's the rough, that was the roughest, you know, the, the roughest area in Philadelphia to me is down there. I mean, it was it was just rough, man. It was just rough. And then, you know, for my dad to be a fighter, that made it tough. You know, my dad to be a, a good fighter at that. Everybody wanted to take the shot at you, kid. We want to see you know what your dad know. Let's go. Where you at? And then, and I'm no sucker. I'm no, I'm, my name Hart. So we going to rumble. And that's what it is. Don't matter what you want to do. If I see you every day, you want this work, we going to rumble. And that's what made the toughness and the grittiness of Philadelphia. The, the, the poverty struck in areas so tough, and we had all the great fighters. You turned pro before the uh, 2012 Olympics because you felt that there was like a corrupt system. Suppose there was another Philly super middleweight. We oh, fight. cool. Whoever! <laughs> you, you turned pro, uh, pro before 2012 Olympics because you felt the system was corrupt and, and you, you know, too many guys like that were screwed or anything like that. See, Darmani Rock was turned pro. But Paul Kroll is in Colorado Springs. He's hoping to make him with, maybe you know, repeat with uh, what Meldrick did. And now, and now they're talking about quick, quick tracking, maybe having pros, uh, uh, you know, you know, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, you know, that he could wind up doing everything that he's done to get ready for this point and then maybe get screwed at the end. I think that's nonsense. I think that's totally preposterous. I mean, you got you got these guys, you know, get, let the pros be the pros, let the amateurs be the amateurs. I think that's totally bogus. I mean, you're not giving the kid a fair tri trial. You're not giving the kid a fair chance at success. He's getting there with an experienced pro. I mean, experienced fighter, experienced pro. It's not going to be. It's not going to be good for two rounds. I'm going. I'm going ten rounds down. All that I do is put all this training, all this training in a three round fight. I'm gonna blow a kid out the water easy. A kid is a dumb kids that's on a living team is not mature enough. Their body has to mature. Paul Cruz, what, 19, 18 years old? Yeah. He's got his body has to mature. These kids' body has to mature into manpower. Then you could have total full flush pro that has manpower that knows what it takes to jump in the Olympics. I think that's tough. You're not giving a you're not giving a kid a fair try. Training now, huh? trying to train. And then plus, and plus the fact, you know, we we've, we've seen horrible decisions, in, you know, uh, at the trials at, at, at the Olympics and everything. So, you know, what big money pro is going to go, you know, is going to go fight the Olympics? It's a gimmick. Yeah, yeah, come on. And, and then you got all these boxing on every network. You got everything on going. That's for the TV thing. Okay. So they can do, yeah. You got all these guys in the ring. So it's, it's like a gimmick. Everybody's trying to make money, and it's not fair. I just don't think they're giving a fair chance to the amateurs in, in, in USA boxing or, or, or amateur boxing, period.